Greetings citizens of the world. A new, but mostly redacted for reasons of classification of state evidence, Security Council, SC, report circulating in the Kremlin today finally reveals the critical urgency of President Putin and President Trump having a one-on-one -on -one private meeting in Helsinki today and further makes understandable why the deep state and Democrats in America are so terrified of this meeting occurring, and is due to the Ministry of the Interior, MVD, authorizing Trump to receive the just finalized partial plea agreement of FSB Major Dmitry Dokuchev wherein evidence is documented showing that former Obama-Clinton CIA Director John Brennan has been an intelligence asset for both Soviet Communist and Russian Federation intelligence agencies for over 40 years. According to this report, in 1976, Oleg Rovinkin completed his studies at the Committee for State Security KGB, Dzerzhinsky Higher School, with his immediately afterwards being infiltrated into the United States, and whose state duty assignment was to compromise for intelligence purposes young American collage students working for the Communist Party USA presidential candidate Gus Hall and that was part of the KGB's multi-decade effort to complete the communist takeover of the Democratic Party, that proved successful when the Communist Party USA quit running their own U.S. presidential candidates with their, instead, only endorsing Democratic Party ones, that began with their endorsing Michael Dukakis, in 1988, and thereafter continuing to only endorse Democratic Party presidential candidates to this very day thus fulfilling the 1944 edict of Norman Thomas, the six-time Socialist Party candidate for U.S. president, who predicted to his fellow communists in the U.S. The American people will never knowingly adopt socialism. But, under the name of liberalism, they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program, until one day America will be a socialist nation, without knowing how it happened. I no longer need to run as a presidential candidate for the Socialist Party. The Democratic Party has adopted our platform. Of the main compromise recruitments made in 1976 by deep cover operative KGB officer Oleg Rovinkin, this report details, was a Fordham University student living in New York City named John Brennan, who not only worked on the U.S. president campaign of the Communist Party USA candidate Gus Hall, but voted for him too with Brennan, in 1980, then joining the CIA in what he described as, I had previously sent in an application to the CIA because of a New York Times ad I saw one time on the way to Fordham, and I had some overseas experience. My wife knew that I had that application, so she prodded me and said, send that application and so you can get a real job and help pay the bills, which I did, and it was a great, great opportunity. The New York Times advertisement for CIA recruitment for Dem University student John Brennan replied to, this report explains, was placed into this newspaper by senior CIA intelligence officer Alger James, who at the time headed the CIA's operations in New York City, but, who was, also, one of the KGB's most highly placed in history deep cover operatives ever to have worked for the CIA and for which Ames is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole in a U.S. federal penitentiary. Of the many KGB compromise American assets CIA senior officer Alger Ames recruited into his intelligence agency, this report details, one of the most important was John Brennan, who, by 1996, was the CIA's daily intelligence briefer for President Bill Clinton, and who, on January 7, 2013, was nominated by President Barack Obama to be CIA director, and was sworn into this office on March 8, 2013, with it being particularly important to note that his pushing forth to Obama by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to be CIA director was nearly immediately followed by her then resigning her post on February 1, 2013 thus ensuring that all of Brennan's subsequent actions would be blamed on Obama, not on her. During the latter part of the 2016 U.S. presidential election, this report continues, President Obama placed a series of red phone calls to President Putin about the subject of CIA Director Brennan, the contents of which remain too highly classified to be contained in this general report, but whose direct response to led to Susan Rice. Obama's national security adviser, issuing a stand-down order in response to supposed Russian cyber attacks. 
based upon information discussed between President Putin and President Obama regarding CIA Director Brennan and the 2016 U.S. presidential election, this report further details, a Russian counterintelligence investigation revealed that, in 1994, then FSB General Oleg Yerovinkin was promoted by President Boris Yeltsin to be the deputy head of personnel for the protection of state secrets, with now FSB Colonel Sergei Mike Hayinlo then being personally tasked by FSB General Yerovinkin to full operational control over CIA Director Brennan, but that after Colonel Mike Hayinlo's recent arrest for treason, he was stunningly discovered to have no documented past at all and over $12 million in cash secreted away in his apartment. At this point in today's Security Council's report, it refers back to the one they compiled on 14th of July, and that we fully documented and referenced in our report on that same date titled Moscow Slam Shameful Comedy Indictment of 12 Russians for DNC Hacking The treasonous FSB officer was actually paid by Hillary Clinton to do and wherein Russian counterintelligence operatives detail how FSB General Erovinkin and CIA Director Brennan conspired to destroy President Donald Trump by ensnaring him in a Russian collusion fairy tale plot paid for by Hillary Clinton and whose main details of are contained in the partial plea agreement deals obtained from convicted for treason FSB Major Dmitry Dokuchev and Russian businessman Georgi Fomkinkov. After discovering that former KGB FSB General Lola Girovinkin had worked with former MI6 British operative Christopher Steele to concoct the made-up Trump-Russia dossier, that was then given to CIA Director Brennan to infect the American body politic with, this report continues. President Putin then ordered Russia's top three spy chiefs to travel to Washington, D.C. to brief their U.S. spy chief counterparts on what had been discovered, and that was followed less than a week later with General Erovinkin being discovered dead in his car in Moscow before he could be arrested for treason. Within a few weeks of President Trump being briefed on this plot perpetrated against him by paid Hillary Clinton agents FSB General Erovinkin and CIA Director Brennan, this report concludes. Brennan made a secret trip to Moscow where he demanded to meet with the FSB, the successor to the KGB but who was strongly advised to return immediately to the United States as the secret killers of FSB General Erovinkin were still roaming around Moscow and could possibly target him next, but whose ultimate fate now is in the hands of President Trump, and whom, if Trump and or the CIA follow the long-standing policies of other intelligence agencies, will sometime in the near future see Trump issuing a glowing statement about CIA Director John Brennan's past service upon being notified of his sudden death, and as was done for former CIA Director William Colby whom was found mysteriously dead, his son said by guilt-induced suicide, and under his watch the CIA was able to be flooded with KGB spies like Aldrich James and John Brennan in the first place.